Hey everybody, it's Ken Davenport. I am live on the Producers Perspective Live. This is my last live stream for now. My last live stream for now. And tonight is all about you. We are taking your questions about everything Broadway related and beyond. It's been a very, very good week in the theater and in the arts and in the world. Uh, we're gonna take your questions on everything right after this theme song, Hit It Mary. From the suburbs, let the sky with too much reverb. Getting the band back together. Gotta go. Hey, everybody. It's Ken Davenport. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our final episode of the Producers Perspective Live. My name is Ken Davenport. We have done 70 something episodes of this, and I'm here. Live with you, Christina Marie. Thank you so much. This has been my balm. Uh, that I so appreciate that. Um, if I seem a little scattered right now, it's because for the first time in the history of our lives, I'm on two cameras. I'm on two cameras right now. I'm going live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. We're very fancy here at the Davenport Theatrical Studio. Our second camera is my iPhone propped up on a bunch of demo CDs of emerging musicals. So here's the good news, all you writers who have sent me these emerging musicals. They're on my desk. They're on my desk, everybody, waiting for me to listen to them. The bad news is they're propping up my iPhone right now for my second camera for our final episode of the Producers Perspective Live, taking your questions. Hi, everybody. Hey, Jose. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, been great. Oh, that, thanks so much. Ooh, I'm going, my battery is going low on my iPhone. This is going to be a challenge. We're going to see how it goes. What, Drew, what will you do Tuesday night at eight? Yeah, give me a shout. Give me a call. We'll go through. That's the first question. Drew, who's been our both most faithful follower has been here since the beginning. I think he missed one episode. Uh, that guest is still very mad at you. And uh, But I'm uh, so thankful and so glad you've been here every time. Uh, and, uh, you know, call me. We'll chat. We'll do something. I, I may be back. I may be back. Uh, one of the reasons I'm taking a leave of absence, hiatus, whatever you want to call it, is things are going well. Things are going well. Uh, things are starting to bubble. I want to get back more to producing and producing live stream events. So let's face it. I've been on these things a lot and it's okay if you've been sick of me. So I'm going to get some other forms of live stream entertainment. Hi, everybody down here, by the way. If uh, Sorry if I've been ignoring you. I'm going to get you some other forms of live stream entertainment. We have, um, I did Kate Rockwell. We did the Duop Project. I've got Matt and Savannah Shaw, who you all met. You met Matt and Savannah Shaw. They're coming on November 28th. Remember that day? Remember that day, everybody on Instagram? We did this thing where we brought Matt and Savannah Shaw, these YouTube superstars on. They met Sierra Boggess, and now I'm producing their event. I'm producing their show. So we're going to do that, What the World Needs Now, on 11-28. 11-28. So uh, thank you for – oh, I love you too, Courtney. This is so sweet. People are very, very nice. Uh, so we're going to do that on November 28th. We're going to bring the Shaws back. So I'm getting more and more back into producing, and I'm excited about the new things I'm going to be able to bring to you both on the stage and online. Uh, and frankly, I just need a little bit more time to cook up some magic for you. So we're going to do that. Uh, again, if you're just joining us, welcome to the Producers Perspective Live. Tonight is all about your questions on anything related to Broadway and beyond. Uh, we're going to get to the news about opening back up uh, that Wayne Stafford just asked right here. Uh, if you have questions, throw them in the chat. Throw them on Instagram as well. If you have questions here. Oh, look, Matt and Savannah are in the house. Look at that. They're in the house. Uh, maybe we'll bring them on to say hello. So uh, if you have questions, ask them anywhere you'd like. I'm doing this dual camera thing. I am very glad I don't work on television because I don't even can't even figure this out. Look, a weather report just came up on my iPhone, my fancy second camera saying rain is coming. So anyway, uh, we're going to get to your questions, anything Broadway related or beyond. But look, let's start with this. Uh, it's been a very, uh, it's been a good week. Let's just put it that way. It's been a good week. 
uh, for the arts, for the theater and the world. Uh, and I don't know if, if, if you had caught this today. I didn't. And all of a sudden I got like 17 texts from uh, my authors of the musicals I'm developing, from my wife, from all sorts of folks. So someone that we all know and love, and no, it's not Lin-Manuel Miranda, said something uh, very, very important just a few hours ago. Mary, let's be very fancy and go to that screen. Folks on Instagram, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to, oh wait, I can probably hold my phone up like that. And now listen to this, everybody. Listen up. But if Jake Tapper wants to get vaccinated, I think you're going to get vaccinated within the first four months. I would say by April, you'll be able to be vaccinated. By, did everyone hear that? Did everyone hear that? By April, by April, Dr. Fauci says we're going to get vaccinated. Dr. Fauci himself has said, whoa, I'm really screwed up my camera angles now. I got all excited about that. Uh, by April, he thinks vaccinations will be available to Jake Tapper and the general, which means the general public, by the way. Jake was like, I'm just a nobody. So, uh, which who's not, by the way. Jake Tapper is like my wife is in love with. So Jake Tapper, if you're watching, my wife would like to say hello. So, uh, but Jake Tapper uh, is, he said, I'm just, uh, I'm low on the priority list. Will I get vaccinated? Uh, when will that happen? And Dr. Fauci says April. This is the biggest news to him. We knew Monday when the, when the vaccine was announced, as I was quoted in an article today, and as I will say again in my uh, opening remarks in my keynote on Saturday for the opening of my Theater Makers Super Conference. No, it's a new name now. In my Theater Makers Summit, my Theater Makers Summit, uh, I will uh, say how that announcement of the vaccine is like a starter gun going off in the race for us to get Broadway back up and running and the theater back up and running. It's very, very very good news. Uh, so we can all be very excited about that. Uh, hello, Artem. Artem is in the house who uh, met me and outed me at the Krispy Kreme the other day. I posted this on my Instagram. Uh, it's good to see you again. I don't have a donut in my arms this time. Uh, Alex, any update on the Manilow musical? So the Manilow musical, he's talking about harmony to all you backstage watchers back there on my Instagram. Uh, Alex is talking about Harmony. So Harmony is a musical that was set to debut at the National Yiddish, Yiddish Theater Folksbian last February, March. Interesting timing. We had actually canceled it because Warren Carlyle, our director choreographer, had been uh, had gotten sick, not COVID. He had gotten appendicitis. We had to cancel, which thank goodness we canceled because we wouldn't have made it. We would have had to shut down because of COVID. So now we are teed up and ready to go. Man, uh, Mandela Musical, which is Harmony, it's also written by a man named Bruce Sussman, is one of the four musicals, four musicals that I'm going to debut. Uh, I was set to debut in this period of time. I would be in rehearsals for my third one right now. I would be in rehearsals for the Neil Diamond musical right now if it wasn't for COVID. But I can tell you that Harmony, Broadway Vacation, Neil Diamond and Joy are musicals that will all start up and run again now that that starter gun has been announced or has been shot and we're off uh, to the running and with the race to get theater back up and running. Uh, let me just check in with my Instagram watchers. How are all of you on Instagram watching? I'm going to see if you have any questions as I go through here. Hello, Hannah. I'm, I'm, if you can, you want, you can follow, you can chime in on Instagram on a second device and get me in like 3D, 4D, I don't know, two devices, 2D, 2D, we'll call it 2D. Anyone have uh, any questions on Instagram? I'm scrolling through, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. I miss Broadway so much, is Broadway coming back? Yes, it's coming back. Uh, oh, I love seeing you guys too. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, what? Um, oh, Billy Murphy just asked, do I? No, that's not it. Do you have any projects on the horizon? Yeah. Just announced those four, those four. There's actually a couple after that, which as you can tell, I'm very excited about getting back to, uh, which is another reason why I'm putting the live stream on hold. 
Let me uh, answer this question. Sean Barnett asks, what is your advice on what regional and community theaters should be doing leading up to when live theater reopens? So this is a very good question. It actually goes not only for regional theaters, uh, but community theaters, Broadway shows, off-Broadway shows. So you, you need to keep your presence and your brand alive. You need to keep people talking about what you're doing or what you're planning on doing. So if you've stopped for any reason, if you're a community theater and you've shut down or a regional theater uh, and you've shut down, you have to start the, the, the factory working again. I often think of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory when I think about this stuff. Like before they were uh, in the movie, before they started pumping out chocolate bars again, you saw the smoke. Remember that scene? The smoke uh, coming from the smoke tax because you knew something was happening. So you need to show people, you need to show your audience that you're working, you're doing things. You may not be shipping chocolate bars yet. You may not be having shows, but you're doing stuff. Look, for example, this live stream is an example of that. This live stream I started 78, 79 episodes ago, and I did it so that people would know that I was still around doing stuff, figuring out how to make better theater, how to make more theater, talking to experts in the business about how they were getting through it, what they were doing. You got to keep your presence out there. You got to keep things going somehow. So do what I'm doing. Interview members of your local community. Have a local community live stream. Uh, do outdoor theater. Have one person shows right now. Uh, how's your social media account? Build that base. Like do th anything you can do. Just because you're not putting something on your stage doesn't mean you can't be building your business, whatever that is. OK, hope that helps, Sean. If you've got a theater, um, I wish you the best of luck in getting back. I still think, look, that theaters around the country will be back up and running before Broadway shows. And just because Fauci says we'll all have a vaccine by April doesn't mean Broadway will be up by April, by the way. Doesn't mean we'll be up by April. I mean, who knows? That timeline we were all worried about, about the summer, maybe even the fall. Maybe we'll push that back. Maybe we'll push that back. I know a lot of people will be trying to make that happen, but we also won't do it until we're ready and until our audience is ready to come back. So you can bet that all the data nerds out there will be surveying their audience asking if the vaccine now, now that we know it's 90% effective, and we still have more to learn, by the way, this uh, we've just got a lot more to learn about this vaccine. If it's 90% effective, it's rolled out right away, when would you come back to the theater? Would that be in May? Would that be in June? Would that be in August? Would it be in December? Who knows? Who knows? We're going to find this stuff out and then we're going to come back when it's safe from a health perspective and safe from a business perspective. Remember, the Broadway economic model is a fragile one. It's a fragile one. Hi, everybody on Instagram. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you are watching the backstage cam, the backstage cam as I'm here going live on Facebook at the same time. Uh, I'm going to take a look at this question from Brenda Allen Greenstein asks, how much lead time is required to procure a theater in advance of a show, I ask? How do you think the pandemic affects this? Great question, Brenda, and very good to see you. So this is one of the things that is really going to be shaken up, and we don't know the answer to this right now, is that before the pandemic, producing a Broadway show was very, very popular. And there were, at one point, a theater owner told me, 1.30 to 35 shows waiting to land in a Broadway theater. I often think of Broadway uh, theaters like, uh, like uh, it's like tr or trying to get a Broadway theater is like trying to land a plane at JFK. You have to circle a long time before you get one of those runways. Well, the pandemic, obviously a lot of those planes scattered, right? They scattered. A lot of those shows may not be on the same trajectory. Some shows may try to come back and not be able to come back, right? So some theaters are going to open up. So the question is, is how long will people have to wait again? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's a good question. I have a feeling it will be a shorter lead time to get a theater. Uh, and we're going to go through this little phase where a whole bunch of shows are going to rush back. And then some may falter just because of a natural process of what's happened over the last nine months. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Sean, I just, oh, Drew. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I don't know how I ended up here. I just kind of, uh, I don't know, tornado came by and I ended up in New York. <laughs> that tornado is known as my producer, Mary Dina. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Listen, we had to have you on. 
Uh, welcome <laughs> to the show because you have been through seven. We've done 79 or 78, Mary. 79? 79. You've been through 78. So I have That's to ask good. you some questions. You are now a live stream guest since you are uh, our biggest fan. And I thank you for that. Who is your favorite guest? I would have to say Janine Tesori because I'm a composer. And uh, I would say uh, Stephen Flaherty. I like talking to the composers. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Stephen yeah. Flaherty. And do you remember anything from Janine's that was very special? Anything from her live stream that made um, you go, that, I'm going to do that? She did answer one of my questions. I'm trying to remember what it was. I I, I do remember a question I asked of Lynn Ahrens that, uh, that she answered online, which was about what do you do for writer's block? And I remember her answer, it was great. She said, if you have writer's block, it's probably because your approach is not right. You gotta start over, you've gotta reframe, you know, the structure of what you're working on. And I think that's the right answer. I love it. One of the best for, for you and for any of the other writers out there who experience writer's block, one of my favorite quotes about writer's block is from Seth Godin, very popular business blogger. Uh, who I've talked about a lot and has come to see my shows and actually wrote about one of them. It was a very big honor of mine. Mm -hmm. we, got a, we, got a, we got a mediocre review from the Times from Alan Cumming, for Alan Cummings Macbeth. Mm -hmm. And Seth has a massive blog following, like a massive. He wrote like 27 books. Uh, and he wrote a blog about like, what the hell do critics know? It was great. It was great. Uh, anyway, the comment he had about writer's block was about other other professions in writer's block, um, which, for example, I think his example was plumbers. You don't plumbers don't talk about having plumbers block. Right. They just do. They just work. They just plumb. And to think writers should think about themselves like any other business person, like a plumber, like an investment banker, like a lawyer, you have a task, you just do it. You show up, you do it, you do it, you do it. Uh, and that's one of my favorite uh, tips about getting through writer's block. Drew, are you frozen? Drew's frozen. Mary, give Drew the hook. Gone. He was staring at me so intently there for a while. He was just staring, wasn't nodding his head, just looking at me. Either he was fascinated by my plumber's block or he was like this guy is nuts and i've fallen asleep or he was frozen turns out he was frozen everybody on instagram he was frozen uh thanks to all of you still watching on instagram and catching this live uh the instagram folks are on the backstage camera which is basically just a, a very awkward angle and may be peering up my nostrils so because it's propped up on my desk anyway Thanks for being here for the last episode of the Instagram of uh, the, oh, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Uh, thanks for, to all of you for being here for this last episode of the Producers Perspective Live, which I'm a little punchy, as I'm sure you've already guessed, talking about my nostrils. I got a second camera going. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know I scooted down the hallway today. Um, that was fun. Uh, let me get to some more questions. Will theater be more affordable post COVID or will it still be somewhat of a luxury? So that's a, that's a very, very good question. And something that I think a lot of people are interested in, uh, me included. So, uh, Justin, oh, Justin, you've got a new, you've got a new logo there, which is why I didn't, uh, recognize you. Uh, good to see you finding the music. I love it. Tell us more about that. Promote yourself in that chat of yours. Uh, so I do think we're going to see some prices come down. One thing I definitely think is going to change. I do not think you're going to see massively inf inflated premium prices. I don't think you're going to see $500 tickets right away. I just think that era is gone for the moment in the same way that high-priced airline tickets have come way down. I think you're going to see that market disappear. And those people are going to rush towards the more reasonably priced full price tickets. And yes, I think you'll see a lot of promotions getting back to Broadway to encourage people to encourage tourists to come to New York. We got to stir that up again, right? We got to get that going again. So I do think you'll see things come back. Remember, producing live entertainment is very expensive. 
It's just very expensive. Do you know why it's expensive? For the people, for the artists, for the artisans, for the labor. That's why it's expensive, right? Yes, the theater rents are expensive. Yes, the advertising is expensive. But the fact is theater is a, a labor intensive art form, right? So a, a large portion of that ticket price is going to people. And frankly, those people need that cash uh, more than ever. So we go down too much. We can't actually afford to pay those people the amounts that they need to pay to have uh, apartments in New York City and, and lives in New York City. So it's a fine line. Uh, Hal Prince once said people have been complaining about the price of theater tickets for the longest time. Now, here's the good news. There's going to be a lot more availability. So while you still may see ticket prices trying to stay up, there's going to be more available to actually give away. This is what I'm excited about because we're not going to be selling out right away at the same level that we were before. So what I'm excited about is offering free tickets or exceptionally low price tickets uh, as incentives to give to audiences and communities to, to try to develop a new audience for the future, right? So if you've been an avid theater goer, if you've always bought your tickets through Telecharge or a premium buyer, expect to pay, I think, similar prices. But what's exciting is with more inventory to play with, I think we're going to be able to invite a lot more people in to see the theater. Uh, and that's what's one of the uh, one of the blessings about this period is that we're going to have more inventory to play with. And I know I certainly am excited about uh, trying to offer that inventory to, to the next generation of theater goers and new generations of theater goers and new cultures of theater goers. Uh, and I know a lot of my peers are feeling the same way. So that's something I'm very excited about. Uh, oh, good. Sean, you are um, our artistic director of a new theater company that launched back in June. You launched during a pandemic. That takes guts. I was going to say something else, but that takes guts. Good for you, Sean. I love it. I love it. Uh, and, and it looks like you're a pretty young guy. So the future of the theater is in very, very good hands. Uh, hey, Joanne, excited for the summit. So are we. So are we. Uh, if you don't know what uh, Joanne is talking about, this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we are doing holding uh, my theater conference. I do this every year. Uh, it's called the Theater Maker Summit. It's our fourth year of our conference. And let me tell you, this is our biggest and best yet. More speakers than we've ever had before. It's like 102 speakers. 102 speakers. Chris Jackson, Paul Taswell, Alan Menken, Tom Kitt, Tom Schumacher, Sonia Taya, Michael Arden, Michael R. Jackson just confirmed. I mean, it's an incredible group of A-listers. I can talk to you guys, do an incredible group of A-listers, 102 speakers over these three days, all talking about how we uh, make theater in a new world. And what's exciting is it's like Fauci uh, timed his announcement with my theater conference. It's like, perfect. We can all be very, very excited and really roll up our sleeves uh, about how we bring theater back. We're all doing it this weekend. If you're not, if you don't have your ticket yet, I urge you to come. I urge you to come. It's going to be one of the most exciting things uh, that I've ever done, ever. Uh, if you're a theater maker, if you're a writer, if you're a producer, if you're a director, if you're an actor, if you're a designer, the summit is the place to be. It is, without a doubt, the one thing we do all year long that we know gets people to a higher level with their career in the theater. That's it. If you want to be a writer, if you want to be a producer, a director, whatever it is, you come to the summit, you have a better chance of doing something with that afterwards. This is not BS. We know this because we track all the people that come. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. I promise you that. But... If you come, you will be much more likely to achieve the level of success that you want to achieve in the theater because of it. Because you're going to, it's not anything that has to do with me. There's 102 incredibly successful theater makers coming. They're just going to tell you how they did it, what they're doing now, what they're going to do in the future. You're going to learn from it. It only takes one. It only takes one comment from the right person to start the domino domino chain in your career and in your life. So I urge you to come, theatermakersummit.com. Uh, and join us. And I think, you know, it could be a close to a thousand other theater makers from all over the world at this conference. So I hope to see you there. Um, that is my plug. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's Sean. Go. Speaking of plugs, give Sean a plug. Uh, go check his theater uh, company out. 
Uh, I love it. Uh, what else do we got over here? Has no one wanted to bring the Muppets to Broadway or is it a logistical nightmare issue? Christina, I love this question. I love it. I think a lot of people have wanted to do this. The Muppets are very are under a very big Jim Henson company control. You know, we get the Avenue Q puppets, which have a little bit of a Muppet uh, inspiration. Uh, but that's a big deal. I, I know a couple people have worked on it. So who knows? Maybe we'll see it in the future. I think one of the concerns, though, maybe, and this is, this is the kind of question that producers have to go through, is like, like SpongeBob, is it too focused on a younger audience and you don't get the parents, right? This is a challenge. Now, maybe there's a lot of nostalgia there for the Muppets. Maybe not. Are you going on a date night to the Muppets? Maybe, maybe. Or are you only going with kids? Because if you're only going with kids, sounds great, right? Not so great in September, not so great on Sunday night or on school nights. These are the challenges that we face when doing family musicals. So sweet spot of shows are shows that you can bring the family to, but also that you can go on a date night, that a spouse can bring a spouse, that a partner can bring a partner, that a boyfriend can bring a boyfriend, a girlfriend can bring a girlfriend, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever the pairing, that you can go on a date night to the theater and also bring younger people for a second trip, right? That's the sweet spot. And you may have seen a lot of family shows falter at some point because, because they don't get the non-school or the school night audience, right? School night audience. It's a challenge. I worked on School of Rock. Um, that's a challenge. It was always a challenge. Showed it very, very well, even on school nights. But we we're always trying to get more because it's harder because you want to bring kids to something like School of Rock, right? Uh, Alan just says it's gonna. He can't wait to get back. I'm gonna look down over here and see if I've got any questions on Instagram. Scrolling down through all the, I want a date night. Says Angela Grout. Uh, please give the info for the summit. Uh, Theatermakersummit.com. I'm just going to type this in for everybody in Instagram. Do, 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 do. Mary just put it up on the screen here, but they can't see that on Instagram, Mary. Come on, get with it. Uh, if you were really good, you'd be on Instagram at the same time, but I guess. Oh, you are? Oh, she is. Damn it. I wanted one more dig into the incredible Mary Dina who's been producing these. She is. Um, what do you think the audition process will be like post-COVID? What a fascinating question says Mermaid Jordy on Instagram. So here's the thing. You can't put Zoom back in the box, right? You can't put it back in the box. It's out. It's out. Zoom meetings, teleconferences, Zoom auditions, video submissions, all that will be more of a thing than it was before. It will not replace what we do live, we will still see that. It will not replace it, but but we will not be able to put it back in the back box. What does that mean? That means more opportunities for all of you who don't live in New York City. That's one of the amazing blessings of this, okay? One of the blessings is that more people can get involved in, in the theater capital of the world, New York City theater, the theater capital of the world. I don't care what London says. More people can get involved in New York theater than ever before without having to be here. Whether you're a writer, an actor, director, these opportunities are going to be available to you now. These oppor uh, opportunities are going to be available to you now, uh, which allows us to have a more diverse group of writers, of actors, of designers, of directors, because you can access it without having to get on a plane or a train because we're going to do more of this stuff. It won't replace it, but expect to see uh, – because you can't put it back in the box. You can't. I'm going to still want to do Zoom meetings. I may work from home. Mary, Mary's going to work from home. I mean, let's face it. She doesn't know that yet, but I don't think she's coming back to this office. Uh, so uh, what else? Uh, you're very welcome for that, uh, for that help there. Um, Mary is 10 steps ahead of you. Yes, she is. She really is. Before I forget, I will do this now because I will probably forget because I'm that much of an a-hole sometimes, is that um, let me just give a shout out to me. All joking aside, I like to poke her um, through. I've done a lot of it throughout these 78 episodes, 79 episodes. But Mary, Mary, come on. 
join us. She just went, oh, God, please. No. No. There she is. <laughs> Wave to everybody. Hey, everybody. Wave to everybody on Instagram. Hey, everyone on Instagram. I'm going to say this with Mary on here. Mary, I could not have done this without you. Oh, God. Instagram people. What? They're gone. <laughs> My battery died. Oh, uh, right. Dang. You go on Instagram and let them all know. Anyway, my battery is dead, so I'm just staring straight ahead. Anyway, of course, that happened while uh, I was giving you an amazing thank you. So let me just say it's your fault that my battery died. Right. Uh, I could not have done this without you, Mary. Yay, thanks, Ken. <laughs> I often, for those of you who don't know me, I often do this. I call my people uh, and I say these words. I have an idea. <laughs> And then they are really wonderful, wonderful staffers. And they, instead of going like, oh, God, what is he going to make me do? Uh, people like Mary on my team go, OK, what is it? Let's do it. And Mary answered that call. And she had never run a platform like this before. Who had? She had never produced an online event before. But she said, OK, I'll learn how to do it. She's amazing now. She not only runs this. She ran the Kate Rockwell event. She ran the do project. She's running this uh, Matt and Savannah Shaw show. Maybe we should call it that. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much for being so awesome and for taking all my jokes. I didn't mean any one of them except one, <laughs> maybe one. Just one? Just one. I okay. won't tell you which one. <laughs> so thank you for that so much. Yeah, of course. All right. Get out of here now. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Uh, she has been a rock star, Dave. She has been a rock star. Uh, she's been working very, very late. Uh, into the night on Tuesday. Do you remember when I did this every night? There was a time at the beginning of this pandemic I was doing this every single night. Oh, my gosh. And Mary was doing it with me. Uh, she has been a rock star. Uh, Drew, are there going to be future installments for the bunny hole? Someone asked me about that, actually, recently, because I've got, all, I've got footage for a second season. Maybe I'll dig that out. Uh, if anyone wants to go, go to bunnyholeshow.com uh, and watch a very, talk about Avenue Q or Book of it's a very adult web series. So uh, don't watch that one with the kids. Definitely not for school nights. Uh, what do I think about Zoom musicals? Just fun for friends or family or the new reality? So it depends on what you are referring to here, because I do believe we have birthed a new art form. It's called streaming theater. It is a thing. It's not going away, streaming theater. It's not going away. So just a musical where you're like reading it there with four boxes and you're doing it, that isn't going to make it. But unique ways to present theater with interactive chat, with second screens of Instagrams, as long as your phone is charged, that stuff isn't going to go away. It isn't going to go away. So I do think you will see a continuation of this. Or as some one of my Theater Maker Studio members said to me, there's no coincidence that Hollywood was born out of the ashes of the flu epidemic of 1918. We birthed an entirely new art form, and it's not going to go away. It won't replace what we're doing, uh, but it's not going to go away. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. How is it going with the Dan plan? It's going very well. About a third of the way through that screenplay, Sean. Third about a third of the way through. And now that the pandemic, you know, we have a end date. Please, please, Fauci, be right about April. Now that at least the starter gun has gone off and we're racing toward the finish line, I got to finish that screenplay. That was a goal of mine by the end of the year, and I'm going to do it. Uh, if you've set a goal by the end of the year, by the way, you only got two months. Think back to those New Year's resolutions you set before the pandemic uh, and see what you can do by the end of the year. It's coming up. Behind every producer is an amazing Mary. Isn't that right, Alex? Uh, let's see what, uh, I'm on here now. Cuss your phone died. Yes, Courtney, it did. I'm glad it did. Thanks for, thanks for making the jump. I really appreciate it. Uh, do you think equity is gonna take this streaming way of theater? Mm, this is a very interesting thing. Equity and SAG are in a big battle right now. Technically, equity doesn't have ju jurisdiction over anything on a screen, right? That's in the definition of what they do. So it's going to be a really tricky battle. There will be a settlement, though. They'll figure it out. Uh, and I do believe that they'll be easier about letting go control of that once we can actually get on stages again, right? So if we're on stages in the summer again, 
then it'll be easier to let go of that streaming thing because they'll have income coming in. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Right now, it's a big battle, battle of uh, territory to territory battles, like mob stuff. What inspired you to get involved with Broadway? Seeing a show, just like everybody else. So my mom tells me I first kicked when I saw a production, when she saw a production of Godspell, uh, when I, you know, how many months along she was when she was pregnant with me. Uh, so it was very special of me to actually produce Godspell, the revival of Godspell. I did theater until I was about 12 years old. My parents got me involved with it very, very young. Uh, I got too cool for it when I was 12. I thought I was going to play for the Boston Red Sox and the Boston Celtics simultaneously. Turned into a big jock. Uh, and then I saw Les Mis when I was 16 years old, and my life was forever changed. I never thought a musical could move me that much. And I remember thinking, I want to move people like this musical moved me. So I uh, quit the basketball team, my high school basketball team, in a scene like right out of high school musical. Like it was that dramatic. Like I was on the uh, I was on the court. I got injured. My coach started calling me a wimp. I like talked back to him a little bit. He was like, ah, you're such a baby. Stop being a baby. And I was like, literally like, you know what? I quit. I quit. And I'm going to do the musical. And I like walked off the court and I did my high school musical. And that's it. I was hooked. Uh, and I have not looked back. And I gave up my career as a professional basketball player. Yeah. Otherwise, I would be playing for the Celtics right now. Uh, not true. Not true. <laughs> there. That 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 answers your question, Betty. Uh, I was very, very. I wasn't very me. I was a little bit better than mediocre. Uh, but let's put it this way: I had to. I had to buy those shoes that increased your vertical leap because I could not jump very well at all. Those shoes, by the way, were on like a Seinfeld episode. Uh, and like only dorks like bought those shoes. I was one of them, like running around my gym uh, in 1987, trying to increase my vertical leap. Uh, didn't uh, work out so well. Uh, yeah, exactly. You're laughing at me now. I love it. Uh, oh, I'm going to put this up. Every year I look younger. I'll take it. Thank you for inspiring me to start my blog. And now I started you. Good. Awesome. I love it. That's Listen, everything I do is all about trying to amplify the conversation of the theater is trying to get more people to talk about the theater because when more people talk about it, more people want to make it. When more people want to make it, more people want to go see it. That's what it's all about. So thank you for helping to inspire others as well. Uh, Benny, I put up your comment here by accident. And I didn't see this. What was the musical? Oh, that my high school musical was anything goes. I played Billy Crocker opposite my high school sweetheart as Hope Harcourt because only, only in high school does that happen. Right. Uh, let's see. Beetlejuice captured my soul. No pun intended, but I know the feeling. Courtney, you may see Beetlejuice back. You may see it back. Who knows? I just had uh, Alex Brightman on a little chat uh, with a member of, of a mastermind group I'm a part of. Um, and who knows? Maybe that'll be back. Maybe that'll be back. Uh, let's see. Will there be a influx of social justice theme plays due to the current climate in society? Well, you know what? Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so. I think we'll see, as we always do, I think we'll see a mix of lots of different types of shows. Um, but I think, listen, there's a great quote I was looking at today about, um, I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up because I want to get it right because I've actually been quoting this for years uh, and getting it a little wrong. So bear with me one second, everybody, as I pull this quote up because I think it's a fascinating one that we all as theater makers can think. It's very timely, very timely. Here it is. Boom. Ah, it's in the chat. Mary, put that up there. Put that up there. There we go. Art, freedom, and creativity will change society faster than politics faster than politics. That's what art does. This was a Russian art collector who said this, by the way. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's hope we see a lot of shows that help with the social justice movement, right? In lots of different ways and types. And I'm trying to think like sometimes on Broadway, 
on Broadway has, you can have a range of different types of material uh, where, where we're just talking, there's a spoonful of sugar approach, like Kinky Boots is the perfect example of this. Kinky Boots makes you think like, oh, they're just trying to make people laugh and make people happy. And no, there's an unbelievable a message in that musical. Uh, I, uh, you can change your, if you change your uh, mind, you can change the world, right? And I often used to go to see Kinky Boots because I was a producer of that. And, and I used to go to the end of it. And I used to see uh, all these folks on their feet. And I remember, like, I always used to find, like, a group of husbands. And you could tell they were, like, from the Midwest or some red state. You could just tell. And they would be on their food, jumping up and down and cheering. And I always used to think, if I had gone to those people who were probably dragged by their wives, if I had gone to them and asked them a week ago, do you think you'll be up on your feet dancing and cheering on a bunch of drag queens in Kinky Boots the Musical? I bet they all would have said, you're crazy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And there they were. And that's because art has that ability, has that ability to change hearts and minds. So I absolutely hope we'll see a whole bunch of shows uh, related to the social justice movement uh, and all movements. Uh, and I, and I, I think we'll see them in a variety of different ways, variety of different ways. I do think we're going to see a whole new slew of voices on Broadway in all different areas. And I'm very excited about that. And, uh, and doing what I can do to help make that happen. Uh, Madonna says, artists are here to disturb the peace. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's see. Yes, Wayne Brady was amazing, Billy. He was amazing. Let's see. What else do we got? What else do we got? What other questions right now? These chats go by so fast, so uh, don't hesitate to throw in a question again if I missed it. Okay, so everyone, and you say prepare for when we reopen. What, what Mary, are you throwing these questions up there? Good for you, because I'm lost. Once that phone died, I was like, I don't know what's happening. Uh, okay, so everyone, and you say prepare for when we reopen. What exactly does that mean And when there's no timeline, no confidence from our audiences? Okay, two things. One, we have a bit more of a timeline right now. So I actually predicted that Broadway would be back up and running next November. Let's cross our fingers and hope this vaccine news and the efficiency percentage, because that's a big factor, and now how quickly they could get it out, that maybe that backs it up a little bit. Maybe that we see some activity over the summer, right? So the other, so the one we, we're beginning to know we're beginning to have a sense of a timeline anyway. So use that, use that and back it up a little bit or use my November date, use whatever you want, put something in. We're going to get through this. Fauci said on another interview today, the vaccine is coming, folks. He said it in Brooklyn at, on a Zoom. The vaccine is coming, folks. We're going to get through this together. So Mary, see if you can find that exact quote. It was just um, something he did from uh, just a couple hours ago. Uh, just like search Fauci folks. I feel like there's probably not a lot of times he's used the word folks. So in a quote. So use a date from nine months from now. Set your own timelines. You're going to have to do this post-pandemic. Set your own timelines. Best advice I ever got. You want a show to happen? Book a theater. You want a show to happen? Book a theater. Right? Set your own timeline. The other thing is the very important phenomenon you talk about when our audiences, what did you say? When our audiences are uh, no, no confidence from our audiences. So there's no question that survey data to this point has shown that people are not willing to come back. Or they're, a, a small percentage are willing to come back. The majority are not. Every day, every piece of news that gets better and better. And remember, they're in the moment right now. And the majority of audiences aren't willing to come back until something is back, until it is back. That's why we have early adopters. If we went on sale right now for tickets for June because we said there was going to be a vaccine in April and we'd be up and running in June or a vaccine in June and we'd be up, people would buy tickets. That's one section of the audience. There's another section of the audience that will wait another three months. There's another section of the audience that will wait until that first day and their friends come home and said, I went to see a show and it was safe. There's no question. 
So you can't rely on what people are saying in the moment because it's going to change the closer and closer we get. The more and more people just buy tickets to something, the more and more advertising, the more and more shows. But right now, they don't know. They're in the, they're in the thick of it. They're ex still experiencing a lot of tragedy, right? This is good news. I'm punchy. I'm upbeat. I'm all that stuff, right? But at the same time, cases in the city and around the country are rising like crazy. So we all have to be very, work very, very hard to, to keep this stuff down until we get out of it. Wear a mask, socially distance, all this stuff. The cases are rising like this. We're in the middle of another wave. We're, my daughter's school is emailing saying, please, please be careful. We don't want to shut down. So we've got a long way to go. But remember, audiences can give us an indication, but they don't tell us the exact. I often say they're not, they can, they can tell you rough directions on where to go, but you can also get there other ways. A uh, famous quote was Henry Ford said, if I asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. They didn't know they wanted cars, right? Our audiences today, they don't know exactly how they feel about coming back because we're not back. We haven't told them there'll be hand sanitizing, there'll be uh, ventilation, there will be masks, there will be socially distanced, there will be testing on everyone in the theater because we're not going to stop doing testing, by the way. Like there could be rapid fire testing you'll know in 15 seconds in six months. We don't know that, but all that stuff comes out, it will increase the confidence of the theater goer, right? So we need to do a lot of work for that, a lot of work. But uh, keep preparing, work on preparing, whatever that is. Whatever that is, be ready. Be ready. Because I want you as a theater maker to be ahead. I want you to be ahead. Uh, I often think of another quote, um, which is not going to apply specifically, uh, but you'll understand the concept here. Um, you know, I, I often look at other industries uh, and other very, very smart people to and apply it to the theater, apply it to the theater. Okay, so this is an example of one of my my favorite quotes, and I'm going to put it in here. Um, and it's by one of the most successful investors ever. Mary's going to throw it up on the screen when she sees it. Why is it not appearing? There it is. Be fearful when others are greedy, and greedy when others are fearful. In other words. When everybody's going one, one way, go the opposite. Go the opposite. So I wish I said that quote, by the way. Uh, it's Warren Buffett, of course, who said that. And basically what he's saying is like the, the mainstream may not know exactly what's best. And this is a time. And there's a lot of people. There's a lot of other theater makers right now that are fearful, right, and not preparing not preparing, not writing another show, not learning how to write another show, not also learning how to act, not uh, marketing themselves, not looking for who they're going to raise money from, not doing that stuff. They're fearful. I get it. And fear makes paralyzes people. It makes people not unable to move, right? What I want you to do is be, when it comes to motivation and making theater, I want you to be greedy. I want you to make stuff. Because at the end of this, I firmly believe the, the greedy theater makers, if you will, the ones that are greedy with making stuff for themselves about preparing are the ones that are going to be ahead. That's it. It's that simple. Because everyone else is going to be trying to catch up. Not you. Not you, Melissa. Okay. Uh, what other questions? I got time for one more question. One more question. So I will look for one more question. Um, let's see. First of all, Hannah Kimball re read your book, How to Succeed in the Art of Pakistan. It was a thing that got me motivated to get back into the swing of life. Take care. Make that. I love it. I love it, Hannah Kimball. Thank you for that. Um, we'll throw up. A, there, there's a link, by the way, I'm going to put up right now on how you can get that book that I wrote for free. Um, so just go to that link that I just put into the chat. Uh, you sign up, you get a book for free. That's simple. 
Um, and it's my story. It's the story of how I achieved the success that I have achieved so far and how I will achieve the success that I want to achieve in the future. Same philosophy, same philosophy. Hope you read it and enjoy, enjoy. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, well, this is a quick one. How can we audition for Broadway without being in NYC? Uh, casting directors are all about the Zoom audition now and video audition or getting to me, getting to me. We had someone, I pulled someone in on a, someone followed me on Instagram or commented on Instagram or sent me a video on Instagram. I cast them in a reading that I was doing just because they joined me on an Instagram live. That was it, right, Mary? Yeah, Mary's giving me the thumbs up. One of my first Instagram lives, uh, a woman, Canadian, I think she was, I may be making that up, but she said, I have a question. She asked, I said, will you sing? She sang. I was like, you're amazing. We're looking for someone to do a reading. Do a reading. She did a reading. Uh, so you just never know. You can. This is the amazing thing about the post-pandemic world is that there are more ways to get to people. There are more ways to get to people than ever before. I'm a big believer that all those gates that were up, they're starting to come crumbling down. You just got to keep chipping away. Jimmy Niederlander Jr., mentor of mine, said to me, if they don't let you in the front door, go down the chimney. That's it right there. Uh, if you haven't been able to get to audition without being in New York City one way, go another way. Go find a way to go down the chimney. Let's see. What else? What else? Oh, someone else read the book. Ah, okay. Great. Angela Grout. How does a writer find an agent to submit work to, to be looked at? So I'm going to look, finding an agent is a very challenging thing, especially now. A lot of the agencies have put people on furlough. How do you find an agent? The best way to find an agent is actually to get your work seen. Okay. To get your work seen. Most people do not find agents by submitting scripts. That is not the way that most people find agents. Most people find agents by getting their shows up, right? By getting produced, by producing something themselves, by doing a reading, by doing a live stream, by putting a Zoom reading up, something, some way of generating eyeballs on it that you can invite an agent to or that you have actors in it that have agents that would recommend you to their agents or the literary department. That is the way, the simple answer to getting an agent, to getting a producer, to getting anybody is to get produced, right? Now I know it sounds like a catch 22. You have to show people your product. It's like anything else, it's sales. You sell some, the best way to sell something is to show it to them, not talk about it. In the theater, pitch meetings don't work. People always say, Show me something when you've got it. Show me something. You and all you other theater makers out there have to figure out a way to show people something. Get up a reading. Get up a showcase. Do, again, a Zoom production. Do a trailer. Do a YouTube demos. Do a CD. Do anything. Show people what you're selling. That's the way you're going to get uh, attract mailings, that kind of stuff. Sure. It's good, it's part of your marketing media mix, but what's gonna get you produced, what's he gonna get you noticed by the press, by agents, by investors, is getting something up on its feet. Getting something up on its feet, okay? That's the biggest piece of advice that I can tell you. It's the same advice that Hal Prince told me, uh, is just get something up, get something done. Bring people together, start doing things, and you'll attract people to you just by the doing, just by the doing. And with that, with that, uh, that's going to end the producer's perspective live for the moment. I will just leave you with one more thing before I go. Two more things, maybe three. One, thank you, Mary. Big, huge applause. I didn't forget to Mary Dina for being the amazing producer that she is. Uh, thanks to all of you for being here. All of you for being here throughout these episodes and all the replays. I so appreciate it. Uh, it has meant the world to me that you've joined me. It was a very, very lonely March, April, May. It's still lonely. I'm sitting in my office right now and nobody's here except you guys. 
So I've been so thankful to have all of you here with me as I blabbed on and talked to a lot of people uh, and dreamed about the day we can all be in a theater again, which we're closer to today than we certainly were yesterday. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. So thanks for joining me throughout all that. If you are a theater maker, if you are an actor, if you're a director, if you're a writer, if you're a fan of the theater, come to the Theater Maker Summit this weekend. Come to the Theater Maker Summit this weekend. I literally guarantee you are going to learn something. You are going to get some piece of advice, some piece of motivation, some piece of education that will take you to the next level in your career. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. You don't like it. You don't get the answer. You can't attend the stuff. Let me know Monday morning. Actually, it goes till Monday. Monday afternoon, we'll give you your money back. This is not about that. We just know the conference works. The conference gets people produced. It finds people, collaborators, connections, yes, agents, all sorts of amazing things happen as a result of the Theater Maker Summit. So come. It is the one place, the one thing that we do every year that we know really injects people with a vaccine of inspiration uh, and motivation. So I hope to see you there. Please come. Uh, let us know if there's anything else we can do for you. If you're looking for resources and stuff, uh, please email me, Instagram me, do all those things. My wife just joined me to, to wish, look at that. Oh, look, it's our my little daughter too. Um, it's been so great having you all here. Thanks for keeping me company. I'm very excited to get back to the work that I love to do about making theater. I hope you'll stick with me. I'll still be blogging. I'll still be doing a lot of stuff. I'll certainly be at the Theater Maker Summit this weekend. Uh, and I hope you'll stick around and, uh, and follow my endeavors. And I promise I will follow yours as well. Thanks again. Oh, 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 we have a, Mary just reminded me, we have a, something to make you smile. And she said, it's like a surprise. She said, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Uh, it's it's just something that I, I think you're going to like it. So I don't know what it is. What is it? Are you going to tell me? Are you going to come on and tell me? Or are you just going to show me? What is it? I guess she's just going to show you all whatever this is. Bye, everybody. Thanks for being here. I'm going to try something. Do you think I can scoot down my hallway while going live you think i can do this if you think i can do this here we go do you think i'm gonna try this i don't think it's possible i think this could be a huge mistake i think it could be a huge mistake but we're gonna try it we're gonna we're gonna try this we're gonna see if i can give you a little bit this is this is not gonna work okay here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna go i'm gonna put the phone down oh god i almost locked myself out I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I may, I may hurt myself. So hold on everybody, hold on. This is what I do. This is what I do during the day because there's no one here in the office. You ready? Watch this. Wait, wait. I'm scooting down the hallway, scooting down the hallway. It is like the breakfast club. I'm coming right for you. That's what I do when no one is looking.